here at the LSI here at Mobile World Congress. So who are you? Troy Bailey with LSI. I'm the Director of Marketing. So what, is, what does LSI do? LSI makes uh, chips, processors for wireless infrastructure. So base stations, backhaul, uh, core routers. Yep. And uh, here at Mobile World Congress, you announced a new processor? Yes, we did. We announced our new 5500 uh, line of products. And this is the world's first processor with 16 Cortex A15 cores. It's also the first processor to implement ARM's new Core Link. Uh, so, where's the Core Link? The Core Link is uh, what connects all the pieces of the SOC together. So, there's ARM clusters as well as LSI's acceleration engines, and the Core Link interconnect connects all of that together in a coherent, um, flexible, scalable system. Nice. Uh, do you have some other uh, slides you can show about it? Sure. So, so what is this for? This is for um, base stations is a primary application, but also, again, cell site routers, um, backhaul. What's interesting about the 5500 and is relevant to the Core Link is it's very scalable. We can go with 16 cores, as uh, we've announced, but we can scale that down to two cores or four cores and also scale the amount of uh, acceleration engines we have. So this could go from, say, a macro cell down to a micro cell to a pico cell using all the same hardware. So since when do you work with ARM? Well, this is the first time that we've had ARM in the Axia systems. LSI has worked with ARM for many, many years. Uh, LSI ships over a million ARM cores a day. So in our other products, we've used ARM for quite a bit. This is the first time that Axia has included ARM cores. Mm -hmm. ARM cores a day, and what kinds of products does that go in? Axia sells our LSI manufactures storage um, controllers as well as networking parts, and uh, ASICs as well. Some of the ASICs have ARM cores in them. So it sounds huge. It sounds awesome to have 16 Cortex A15. That's basically because you want huge performance in there. Right. Well, when you look at we're going to LTE, LTE advanced, we need more and more bandwidth, more and more processing. You need more and more cores to do the processing. And ARM is a very good choice because of its infrastructure and because of its power efficiency. So how has that, those solutions been uh, implemented thus far before this system? What are people um, doing? With, the, with ARM systems? No, what are people doing uh, to support LTE and all that stuff today? Uh, same thing, more and more cores, um, but uh, our previous generation used uh, PowerPC cores. We still have those. Other folks use other architectures. But, x86? Um, sometimes x86, but yeah. usually an embedded architecture, such as MIPS, uh, PowerPC, ARM. Which one is the biggest in this market? Well, ARM is by far in the mobile. Uh, in the handsets. So most of the handsets in the world use an ARM core. Um, however, in the infrastructure, it's, it's a new thing uh, to use the ARM cores. But again, we need more and more cores within the same power footprint. ARM is a very interesting uh, aspect because of its power efficiency. But so which uh, architecture was uh, leading until now, today? Which one? I think that it was kind of? a mixture. I think it was a yeah. mixture of, of MIPS and PowerPC uh, would be primarily. So can you say a little bit about how, you, how it might be that the ARM core, I'm not sure if you're allowed to say, but uh, uh, could you say how using ARM in this solution could be uh, the best solution for that? Well, I, I think it's, it's one of the solutions. Uh, we, we certainly have PowerPC. People use the various things. So our customers were, were requesting this, and it, and it makes a lot of sense in terms of ARM's very strong roadmap into the future, 64-bit and so on. Also, the ecosystem, finding partners um, or our customers to find partners to do software, et cetera, is very strong with ARM and getting stronger. Do you have more slides you can show yeah. also? So this is, again, the overall... Um, architecture of our processor. It has CPU modules, again this time going with, with uh, ARM cores, the Core Link Interconnect. LSI has acceleration modules. We've also added an Ethernet switch. And we use um, a technology called the Virtual Pipeline Task Ring to route packets throughout the system to the acceleration engines, to the CPUs, depending on what type of packet it is, what type of a flow it is. And this is something that LSI um, exclusive technology that uh, really uh, helps with the uh, performance. So you don't include a GPU because you don't need? No. GPU? Yeah. So uh, how is the chip different from uh, some of these ARM processes that maybe other companies are doing for servers, let's say? Sure. Is it similar? Or? Well, I think the, the, the difference lies in the acceleration modules. There's a lot of the tasks in networking can be done with a general purpose processor like an, an ARM CPU with software algorithms. But there's a lot of the workload that's very simple, 
you do it on a million packets per second. Um, it's fairly light touch. To use the general purpose program um, model for that is a little too heavy. So we have acceleration engines that are optimized programmable hardware that can uh, handle this much more efficiently. So you wouldn't find that in a server uh, ARM system. How is acceleration models different from DSP models? Well, you're accelerating pa packet processing, so it's, it's pure digital. Um, so looking at uh, uh, doing a five-tuple lookup to determine what type of a flow the packet is, editing the packet, doing things like deep packet inspection, compression, security, um, uh, all the things that you do with packets that really don't require a DSP. So is this sampling or not yet? We'll be sampling in early third quarter, so just after the middle of the year. Early third quarter sampling? Yes. And mass production? It typically, it's a six to nine month uh, process after that to validate, and it also working with the customers to get their products ready to, to go out. So 2014, uh, this is going to be all over the world? Absolutely. In which countries do you sell? Where does it go? We, we sell to the top uh, manufacturers in wireless infrastructure, so uh, this will go everywhere. Actually, LSI has, has uh, announced that we'll be in about uh, half of the base stations once these go into production. Half of all base stations for all LTE, 3G, 4G, and all that. Half all of the new the base world. stations going out will have Axio processors in them. And uh, thanks to your solution, uh, uh, there's uh, less power being used, I guess. Yes. And better performance. Right. And that's good for our planet. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. And it's good for the, the network operators because they need to have more and more performance, more and more data, but they don't want to go out and add more power and more cooling into their, so if they can, and actually with this, uh, with the ARM cores and the 28 nanometer process we used, compared to the previous generation, we get four times the performance per watt. So with the same power footprint and cooling in the base station, they can get four times the, the data handling performance. So big benefit there.